Today's lesson is on adaptation. And adaptation is a, a pretty cool concept in biology. Adaptation is something that a plant or an animal has or does to give it an advantage. For example, an adaptation can be a body part or it can be a behavior. In your science book, there's a whole section here on adaptations. And so today's lesson goes along with how animals interact with each other and how they use their behaviors and their body parts to their advantage in their habitat. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to learn about interactions among living things. And we're going to talk about how, how do adaptations help an organism survive. And so an adaptation is a, is a, uh, a behavior or a physical characteristic that allows an organism to li live successfully in their environments. And on this next page is a picture of a desert scene. I used to live in Tucson, Arizona, and I would spend my free time out in the desert looking for roadrunners and scorpions and snakes and watching the birds. And I liked the roadrunner because the roadrunner, no matter how much I chased it, it would never fly. It could run pretty fast. It didn't need to fly. It would take off running at very large legs. It was very fast and adaptation. Even the cactus in the desert has adaptations. This large saguaro cactus is almost like an accordion. Since it doesn't rain much, when it does rain, all of these pleats will swell up to soak up the water. And also the leaves there, so they don't dry out, have evolved into needles. So the desert, like any environment, the plants and the animals that live in it have to adapt and they have special adaptations that allow them to be successful in their environment. So an adaptation allows us to be successful in our environment. Now I said us, because yes, we have adaptations. We have body parts and behaviors that allows us to be very successful. The first body part we have that's better than any other animal is our brain. We have a complex brain that allows us to process thoughts and ideas and emotions. Now we also have something in here called vocal cords that allow us to speak with language. Language is a learned behavior. You hear me, I'm talking, I'm making sounds that mean something to you. Your brain is processing them. So we have this complex brain and this ability to communicate called language that is a great advantage or adaptation that allows us to be successful in our environment. Now, sure, you know, other animals communicate. Dolphins can make sounds and elephants and whales and birds, things that make sounds can hear sounds and those sounds have meaning. But no other creature has such a complex adaptation as our language. There's over 200 languages in the world. So the ability to have a complex brain and to speak and make sense is a great adaptation. Ah, but there's one more. And I said, ah, there's one more. There's one more thing that separates us from a lot of other creatures. And it's right here on your hand. These things right here. We have thumbs that are opposite our fingers. This is called an opposable thumb. It's opposite of our fingers. Now what that allows us to do is to grab things and to make things and to play the piano and to touch and to strong strength crush and to grasp. But more importantly, it allows us to make tools like ink pens and wrenches and hammers. Our hand is an amazing, an amazing design. And because this thumb is opposite, we can make tools and live successfully in this world. Uh, if you don't believe me, teachers, for this afternoon, the rest of the day, get some masking tape and ask for volunteers to tape up your thumb. Now, other animals have all theirs. It's good for clawing and for digging and for fighting and for protection and for running but they can't pick up things the way we can. So if you lost the ability to, I don't know, I'd have a hard time picking this up but just with my fingers, your thumb allows it to be manipulated 
to be built, to be made. Thumbs are cool. So thumbs up to our brain, our language, and our thumbs. Those are great adaptations. So today we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game to try to learn a little bit more about adaptations. And we're going to study birds. And in fact, we're going to study one bird part, the beak, which is an adaptation of not teeth, because birds don't have teeth, but of cartilage that birds have used over the millions of generations. So let's get your worksheet, and let's go ahead and fill in your name and the date, because uh, on this activity, it's a simulation or a game to learn how adaptations help birds. And there's a lot of materials your teacher's already passed out, which is your plastic cup, the cup, which you're going to use as a stomach, and a bird beak model, and it could either be a skewer, or maybe you have a clothespin, or maybe you have a spoon, and we also have a bag of food. So these things are the things that we're going to use for this activity. So go ahead and get your, uh, go ahead and get your materials ready. Okay. Uh, my beak model is a bamboo skewer, so I've filled it in here. And here on the front of my worksheet, I'd like you to do the same thing. And so you have these different models. You have the bamboo skewer, you have a closed pin, or a spoon. That are going to be our beaks. You also have a cup that's going to be your stomach. Now, this is a model, so like all models, some of the things will act just like the bird beak and some of them won't. So you have a model of a bird beak and a cup that's going to be your stomach. Now, since this is a simulation, there's a couple rules that uh, we have. And the first rule is we're going to do this on the ground, so you want to take, you have a red yarn circle, you want to take that out and uh, we're going to spread that on the floor. But before we do that, let's look one more time at our worksheet. Okay, on the second page it says to draw your bird beak model. Now mine's pretty easy because mine is just a straight sharp bamboo skewer. So there's my skewer. And now I want to look at these, after you draw that, whether it's a spoon, a skewer, or a clothespin, I want to look for birds that have a beak like my model. This one does. Maybe the heron. I know this, one, this one's pretty close. I'm going to turn this over and let's see if these guys, oh, here's one. Look here. This hummingbird Mine looks very much like a hummingbird. And as I go down the list, look at each bird beak and see, uh, mine may be like a kingfisher. Here's my hummingbird. And go ahead and, uh, and check and see which beaks are like the birds here, or which, which birds are like the beaks here, and put a check by them. All right, now I want you to draw, I think I'm going to draw the hummingbird, because I want you to draw a bird head that has a beak like your model. So mine is kind of like a hummingbird. There's my hummingbird. That's not the best drawing in the world, but that's okay. It's a science drawing, so my beak looks like my model. Okay, you've uh, selected your beak, you've drawn it. Let me show you how I need you to be set up in your classroom. It looks like this. Here's a drawing of some students that I had uh, at my school, and they have here on the ground, they have... Do I make this a little bit larger for you? 
they have their circle, the food items, their bird beaks, and their cups are behind them. That's the part I want you to make sure that the cups are behind, okay? So uh, uh, let me show you what I mean. See, here's the, uh, there's the food items. There's the beak, and they put their cup behind them. The cup goes behind your back because that'll make it a little more fair. So her cup's behind her back. So all the cups go behind their back. And even over here, you can see that this young lady has put the cup behind her back. And that's what I want you to do when you're back on the floor, okay? So you got your beaks, your drawing. So the first rule, rule number one, put the stomach behind you. It wouldn't be fair if you just had your cup there and you scooped up. That's, that would defeat the whole purpose. So your stomach goes behind you, all right? Rule number two, I don't want you to use your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, use your left hand. If you're left-handed, use your right hand. That'll make it a more interesting simulation or game. So don't use your dominant hand. That's rule number two. Rule number three, Okay, uh, this is gonna be, a, it, when you pick them up, you can only use one hand. Birds don't have two beaks. So when you pick it up, you can't take your other hand and push it off. You have to find a way to get it off with your one hand. All right, so those are the three rules. Rule number one, your stomach goes behind you. Rule number two, don't use your dominant hand. And rule number three, only one hand, all right? So let's get in our positions. Okay, I think we're about ready to get started. Uh, we're gonna have three minutes to do this. I've got our, our timer ready for three minutes. So we should be on the floor with our food in the circle, our stomach behind us, ready to go. And we're going to start in 10 seconds. Remember, one hand. Ready, set, start the feeding. Okay, timer done, time's up. Stop what you're doing right now, please. Stop the bird feeding, okay? All right, you should have some material in your cup right now, and we're going to work with that data, and we're going to count them. And as you see here, on mine, I had two beans, six toothpicks, 26 pieces of yarn, 64 marshmallows, and 46 pieces of foam. Once these are counted, I'm gonna graph them in a, in a bar graph down here. So my beans, each one of these ticks are worth two. So there's two, I'm gonna write the number next to it. Toothpicks, I had six. Yarn, I had 26, so I come all the way up here to 26. Okay. I had 64 marshmallows. Wow, looks like my beak was pretty good. It had an advantage for marshmallows. <laughs> no advantage for beans. I don't even know how I got those. And foam, I was pretty good with foam too. I'm gonna go back and put the actual values next to these. And I'm actually going to um, this is two for the beans, okay? Six for toothpicks. 26 for 
for the yarn and 64 for marshmallows. You know, I'm going to stop there just for a second because what I was hoping to do was get 100 points of nutrition. So I had to add some value to these items. So you may want to copy this onto your chart with me. So for example, the value of beans, toothpicks, yarn, and marshmallow. The value of beans, beans are pretty, a lot of nutrition, so I'm going to give them a three. So, and I'm trying to get over here 100 points for a meal. So go ahead and write 100 points there. So the value of the toothpicks, uh, they're pretty good, two. The value of the yarn, one. Because, you know, yarn doesn't have a lot to it. Marshmallows, one. So we have three, two, one, one. That's my value. I'm trying to get to 100 points. Let's see. Two times three is two times three equals six. So I got six points. Six times two equals 12. Hey, I'm getting there. Plus 12. Okay. 26 times the value of 1 equals 26, plus 26, I might get to 100. 64 marshmallows, 64 times the value of 1 equals 64. Let me add these up and see what I have right here. 10, 18, see 10, 18, carry the 1. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, 108 points, I, and I'm not, I'm not even done yet. 108 points. Looks like I had a good feeding. Oh, wait a minute. What I left out? Oh, foam. Oh my goodness, I forgot. Foam. Foam. And I had for foam, I have 46 pieces of foam. Now you might realize that I'm using a pink red marker. That's because. Foam is pollution. Who would eat foam? If you ate foam, I hope no one ate foam like I did. Foam will kill a bird, or at least make him sick. And the value of foam, since it's bad for you, is minus one. Foam is pollution. So here I have 46 times minus one equals a minus 46. And I was at 108 points, minus 46. Well, I can tell you right now, <laughs> 62 points is as good as I'm going to get on this feeding. I'm going to be a little hungry tonight. All right, so any foam you have, you multiply it by minus one. All right, when you're finished with that, as an individual, I want you to do this as your group. So you can go back with your group. And remember, we're going to use the same values. Beans are worth three. Toothpicks are worth two. Yarn is worth one. Marshmallows are worth one. And foam is worth minus one, minus one. Go ahead and complete it. You should be able to see how some bird beaks are an advantage in your forest for some foods and how some bird beaks are not good at all. And sometimes a good bird beak can be used in a bad way, like picking up foam. And that's how animals interact, living things interact in the environment. Good luck with this. There are several questions I want you to complete on the worksheet. I can't wait to see how well your bird beaks adaptation game turns out. I'll see you next time. Finish your data.